There's actually a lot of good stuff in here. I'm look now I'm looking through all this. Let's here look. <laughs> Let's find something. Does this have audio? Yo. SDS one integration. What Here, let's start. Let's start with this. Screw it. All right, fellas, I'll be back momentarily. I'm just gonna take a quick break, and we'll go from there. Four pad to all stations. Mark. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, one. Line, United Kingdom. Today on these British Isles, an undisclosed number of four missile units are being ready to supplement the present deterrent force. This is weapon system 315A, a system designed around the intermediate range ballistic missile concept, the IRBM idea. The meaning of IRBM can be simply stated. Ballistic missile means the delivery of a nuclear warhead in a ballistic arc from one point on the Earth's surface to another point on the Earth's surface. Intermediate range means that Thor can achieve a spectrum of ranges from 300 to 1500 miles. This concept has marked significance. Consider this globe of ours from the viewpoint of a polar projection, a top of the world look. There are two main land masses, the complex of the two Americas and the Eurasian complex. Prior to the advent of strategic missiles, the Air Force already had in effect a three-pronged or three-dimensional strategy to operate in this world geography. We had long-range bombers of the B-52 type, intercontinental bombers, capable of flying from one complex to the other and returning. We had intermediate range bombers of the B-47 type, which can fly from bases located on the fringes of the Eurasian complex to any point on that landmass. We also had fighter aircraft like the F-84 and F-100, capable of flying from allied bases within Eurasia itself. Their range tremendously extended through air-to-air -air refueling. When missiles arrived on the scene, they began to augment the striking force of this kind of air power. ICBMs like Atlas and Titan, the intercontinental missiles, add to our long-range potential. An IRBM like Thor adds to our middle-range deterrent program. And a missile like Matador, with a range of several hundred miles, blends with our fighter force. For the immediate future, at least, the idea of combining aircraft and missiles, mixing them, seems like the ideal solution to defense. But not too long ago, three short years in fact, we did not have this ideal concept. And so we flash back to Dateline, summer 1955, Washington, D.C. In 1955, this is where we stood. We had fighter aircraft like the F-100, backed up by the Matador. We had begun the development of the ICBM's Atlas and Titan to supplement the B-52. But we did not have an IRBM program to complement the B-47. We had a chink in our armor. We needed, and our NATO allies needed, a reliable IRBM as soon as possible. Dateline, November and December 1955, Los Angeles, California. At this time period, there was already in existence in California a unit of the Air Research and Development Command. It was known as the Western Development Division. Later, the name was changed to the Ballistic Missile Division, referred to simply as BMD. 
BMD was organized for one purpose and one purpose only, to carry out a crash program on the development of the intercontinental ballistic missile. It was a unique organization spawned out of the creative talents of some of the nation's leading scientific minds. BMD would eliminate red tape, shorten command and communications time, leapfrog development, work concurrently on all phases of the problem. When the need arose for an IRBM missile, BMD was already going full bore on the two previously assigned intercontinental missiles, Atlas and Titan. It was only logical that BMD also take on the development of an intermediate range missile, since it is generally the same kind of bird as an ICBM. BMD was asked to get the IRBM program underway with utmost speed. As it turned out, it took 50 days, 30 days to submit plans, and 20 days to freeze design. This was the speed, the new look in Air Force research and development. This is how it was done. On the 28th of November, 1955, BMD was directed to proceed with the IRBM. On the same day, contractors were notified to prepare proposals. These contractors were being asked to build an airframe, assemble the primary missile systems, test the product, develop and fabricate ground handling equipment, and simultaneously create a manufacturing capacity to produce the number of completed missiles we needed in the time available. In short, these companies were handed a real headache. Those contractors who thought they could meet the stringent demand submitted their proposals. On December 23rd, the Douglas Aircraft Company was notified that it had been selected to assemble and test the Thor IRBM. On the 28th, Douglas signed the contract. During the remaining few days of 1955 and on into 56, the design of the Thor airframe was rushed to completion. On the 16th of January, the final configuration was frozen. The contractors for the other major components of the missile were already working for the Atlas program. General Electric would supply the nose cone for the new Thor. The AC spark plug division of General Motors, the guidance unit and North American's Rocketdyne division, the power package. Thor was in business, backed by an all-star team of military, industry, and science. Dateline, April 1956, Douglas Aircraft Company. Three months in the story of the creation of Thor have passed. The groundwork on which all future actions would be based was underway. In offices, in shops, in laboratories, men were poring over drawings and blueprints, meeting for chalk talks, designing models and mock-ups. Factory areas, large as football fields, were being cleared. The great potential of American industry was beginning to stir. Missile technology was working up ahead of steam. It is strange that in this day of rare elements, alloys, and plastics, Basic layouts often start with man's oldest material, wood. Thor was first a creature of wood, a skeleton of pine in which engineers could investigate and experiment, fit and refit, check and recheck. But the missile itself was not the only item that had its beginning in wood. Scale models were made to check the feasibility of airlifting Thor in existing cargo aircraft. Perhaps designers are only boys at heart, the same serious, intense concentration is evident as they play with these toys. But a toy, if it's good enough, can give valuable insights into real problems of clearance, balance, weight distribution. The entire concept of the Thor weapon system from the start was that it must be air transportable. Dateline, July 1956, Edwards Air Force Missile Test Center. Six months have passed. Out on the California desert, test stands to check out the performance of rocket engines were being readied. The fact that these stands exist at this time points up the overlapping nature of the Air Force's ballistic missile program. These stands had been built for the testing of Atlas engines. Since Thor would use one of the booster engines from Atlas, these stands could be used for both studies. During the summer of 56, the first in a long series of engine tests was run. The power that would push Thor 1,500 miles through space was in the making. 
Dateline, August 1956, Los Angeles, California. Thor was taking on shape and substance. Assembly line methods, reminiscent of aircraft production, were transforming Thor from raw concept to finished product. Giant presses conformed sheets of metal. Welding machines joined metal to form the characteristic cylindrical shape of a ballistic missile. Some eight months from zero start, Thor was being produced. Produced in such a manner that future operational missiles could come off the same assembly line without major redesign of airframe, guidance unit, engine, or nose cone. Dateline, November 1956, Cape Canaveral, Florida. Eleven months have elapsed. During these months, the missile test center at the Cape has been ready to receive Thor for test flight. A launch pad is ready. A service tower is ready. A control blockhouse is ready. The range is ready. And in 11 months, the first Thor, Missile 101, arrives. More, the missile arrives in the way intended, by air. Out of the C-124, Thor, for the first time, rolls over the ground that will witness its trial by fire. And so, during the closing days of 1956, Thor follows the script and moves into dress rehearsal. Thor is erected into its service tower. This is like a child being raised by proud parents for his first tottering steps. You have done your best in bringing up your offspring. Now it's up to him. However, such thoughts carry only so far. A missile is not a child. It is a mechanical giant. For one thing, it has to be fed thousands of gallons of liquid oxygen, which is only a fluid at the unbelievably low temperature of minus 297 degrees Fahrenheit. At last, Thor is fed and primed and ready. Ready, however, not for a flight, but for a static, a held-down test of performance. And Thor does perform, but not to the standards demanded. And before Thor can be ready for a full flight test, the year ends. 1957, one year in the story of the development of Thor has passed. We begin the new year at Cape Canaveral. During 1957, 10 missiles were fired from the launch pads of the Atlantic Missile Range. The first was missile 101, the same Thor given a static test in 1956. The elaborate countdown was started during the day and carried on into the night. Lock stopping valve closed. Closed lock tank vent. Closed spillover. Monitor lock tank pressure. 40 seconds. Lock on. Lock on. T minus 30. Mark. Start tanks. Pressurized. Start tanks. Burning your fuel vents. Minus 20 seconds. Minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Test number one ended in failure. During the succeeding eight months, three more firings were attempted with missiles 102, 103, and 104. three failed to achieve the desired amount of success, although missile 102 was erroneously destroyed due to a failure in range instrumentation. On September 20th, 1957, missile 105 was ready. Clear your attention in the blockhouse, please. Attention in the blockhouse. This is T minus 35 minutes in a hot run. We're at T minus 35 minutes in a hot run. Close the blockhouse doors. Close the doors. We're counting. It's T minus 35. Man your stations. No talking, please. Again, the launch area was cleared. Instrumentation focused on the missile. And the countdown carried on to firing. 
This missile fired was a success. One year and nine months from scratch, Thor came of age. During the remainder of 57, five more Thors were fired. The first of these was a failure in a spectacular way. Discovery, go at throttle up. The other four missiles tested were successful. And as confidence grew, each firing became more ambitious. One of these flights exceeded design range by 900 nautical miles. Ample cause for some real backslapping in the Thor blockhouse. While early missiles were merely stabilized on an approximate trajectory, now the missile's own guidance system was phased in to steer the missile precisely to target. At year's end, the score added up to 10 missiles fired, half of these very successfully. A very creditable showing for a missile barely off the drawing board. But while flight testing was a real highlight, of equal importance in 1957 was the preliminary work being done in planning for an operational capability. One idea dominates thinking. A missile, no matter how good, is useless unless it can be handled easily and effectively by the military in the field. Step number one was to work in diagrams, almost an artist's concept of what an operational site would look like. This was the first visualization. Diagrams merged into scale models. Bro, I want those models toys. Models of launchers and trailers. I fuel want the... Story oh, that's system. cool. In short, I want... all of oh, the I want it. features of ground handling a new tool of warfare. This was the second visualization. Scale models then came to life in full-size units. A real prototype launcher was constructed. Fuel storage tanks were fabricated. Trailers were equipped with checkout and control equipment, pressurization trailers, power trailers. All of these real these units are just big moved toys, into a so demonstration area Look at that toy. and were set up to roughly conform to the planned field installation. And the key men of the project came out to look and observe. This was a place to inspect, but it was also a place to imagine. Look at that. To evolve new ideas and generate improvement. Look at that. Hold on. Hold on. Observe. This was Gee, it hasn't really changed much, has it? <laughs> Gee. It was a place to inspect, but it was also a place to imagine and to evolve new ideas and generate improvements prior to final design freeze. And so 1957 came to a close with Thor pointing its nose to the sky in an operational environment. This was the backyard of a factory. But it was symbolic Somebody's of events that could happen in the that? backyards of the world. Day 5, January 1958, Missile Test Center, Florida. <laughs> a C-133 is at the Cape with a Dude. new launch equipment aboard. Look at that. Look Shortly at that! Shortly after, it is being tested in preparation for a flight test. Day 5. January 1958, Sacramento, California. Concurrent with events in Florida, on test stands in California, other missiles were being captive tested to learn something additional on such factors as vibration, duration of thrust. Dateline February 1958, Edwards rocket base. Other Thors on test stands. The simultaneous feedback of information is at work. Here at Edwards, Data will be gathered on environmental factors affecting Thor. The missile in the field may have to withstand Arctic cold, tropic heat, driving rain, sleet, and snow. You cannot make Thor an all-weather missile by guessing. You must test and know. Dateline May. The more you know. Santa Monica, California. By this time, oh. operational type missiles are coming off the assembly Dude. line in a steady flow. The soundness of basic design and production line tooling are paying dividends. Not only missiles, but all of the support equipment associated with it are also in quantity production. Here is a missile shelter under test. This will be home for Thor, a protection against the weather. 
Here, Thor will rest on alert status in a horizontal position until the shelter is rolled back and the missile is raised to the vertical position for firing. Dateline, June 4th, Cape Canaveral. Thor number 115 is ready for firing from an operational type launcher. This time, no flight readiness firing. This time, Thor will be fired cold, as in the case of true operational use. And the flight is a success. Thor takes off as well from this simplified tactical launcher as it had from the more elaborate R&D test launcher. Dateline, June 1958, Tucson, Arizona. A new and vital facet has become a part of the program, training. Training is simple logic. Mastery of arms has been with us ever since man threw the first spear, fired the first crossbow. Here today, men from the United States Air Force and from England's RAF master the specialized techniques oh, of handling legit, and firing dude. a ballistic device. The diploma testifies that they are now missilemen. More specifically, missilemen capable of carrying out a new idea in defense, the IRBM idea. Dateline, September 1958, somewhere over the Atlantic. Did you see that story, That thing was cool. The significance of this aircraft flying the Atlantic is that it carries in its cargo compartment the first Thor to be delivered to an overseas base. Thor rolls quietly through the English countryside. Two years and nine months from inception, an IRBM missile is in the hands of one of our NATO partners. Two years from Two nothing. Two years and nine months. Streamline development for wow, the ballistic that's missile fast. age is a fact. That's fast, considering they had no idea what they were doing. Over 17 years since the Battle of Britain, then the people looked to the Spitfires and Hurricanes. Today, a new protector guards their shores. Dateline, late summer, 1958, Cape Canaveral Range. By this time period, the use of the Thor weapon system has assumed wider proportions. Thor has another missile stage fitted to its nose section and becomes Thor Able, a new type of re-entry test vehicle. And then it became Thor Delta after that, if I'm remembering right. This vehicle is capable of hurling a nose cone over the ICBM range of 5,500 nautical miles. In other words, Thor Able can, at full range and with realistic velocities, gather data to check whether an ICBM nose cone is correctly designed. Thor Able becomes a valuable test instrument. It allows ICBM the, data to be collected by a smaller type missile, thereby allowing more flight test time for an ICBM like Atlas. Another example of the integrated ballistic missile program. Dateline, the moon, summer and fall, 1958. During this time period, Thor became one of the vital stages in the Air Force Space Probe project. For the space probes, three stage missiles were assembled. Thor was the main stage, Got the Thomas. prime propulsive package. Of the three attempts, the second try made in October of 58 was the most successful. On this firing, all three stages functioned nearly perfectly terminal vehicle was launched on its two and a half days journey to the moon. A slight deviation in control put the missile off course. The terminal vehicle traveled more than 71,000 miles toward the moon before returning to Earth. Oops. While attempt number two did not achieve all objectives, much virgin information was obtained. This was the first real look at the Earth's magnetic field and at temperatures and radiation levels from 70,000 miles up. This missile attained a higher speed and went a greater distance than any vehicle before it. Dateline, December 1958, Vandenberg Air Force Base. This new missile base on the coast of California is the site of another one of Thor's ambitious undertakings. The Discoverer satellites will be fired in polar orbit, which will be the first time the South Pole to North Pole path has been used by any of the man-made moons. Early in 59, the first of these satellites, a 1,300-pound unit, was successfully put into orbit. 500. Yes, with the no, versatile Thor as one of the kilos. prime tools, man in 58 was pushing back the frontiers of space. Doing this with a missile that you, did Sion. not even exist 
three short years before. Three short artificial, years. Artificial satellites. Speed of development being ready now is the big story of Thor. If the need should arise, operational Thors can be uncovered, fueled, erected, and fired within 15 minutes. This is a mighty symbol of the determination of the free peoples of the world to guard that in which they believe. A shot. Oh, that was sick. Let us pray that the sound of this new thunder may never be heard in anger. Let us instead it never enjoy was. the delicious silence of peace in that dateline called the hopeful future. Did you guys know that variants of that thing flew until 2018? 2018. So 1958, 5758 to 2018. Yep. Yeah. You guys may have known the mission. Ice Sat 2 was launched on a very heavily modified Thor missile, and you might know it as Delta 2. That is just an elongated Thor missile with a hypergolic upper stage and some solid rocket boosters. The design did not really change that much over the course of 60 years. Yep, that was the last launch. Yep. And the Delta family of rockets does live on. Technically, technically there are variants of Thor that still fly today. It's the Delta 9000 series over here. Delta 4 Heavy. Even though it doesn't really share much common architecture, they just kept going with the name. Delta 4 was a very, very, very big redesign. So... There's Delta II, right? And then there was Delta III, which was a Delta IV upper stage with a Delta II core, for the most part. And then they got they they really did away with these in the... Uh, they did away with Delta III and replaced it with Delta IV in the 90s. But Delta II rockets did fly until 2018. It's a good 60 years of work. Not bad. How many Delta IV rockets are left? Three. And then that's it. That caps Delta. Which sucks, but it is what it is. Also, you said they had no idea what they were doing, but you did. But you did have Von Braun in the fifties, which was who was not working on this project in any way, shape, or form. Solar. Uh, yeah, no, this is Air Force. Thor was Air Force. Thor and Titan. We're, we're from the Air Force. Von Braun was an army engineer. That's where he went after he came to the States in 1946. Uh, I think it was 46. He worked for the army. He had nothing to do with this. Straight up. Yeah. Von Braun worked on Redstone, Jupiter, Juno, Saturn, Saturn 1, Little Joe 2, Saturn 5. Yep. Dude, that's what, that's what a lot of people don't know. Like, a lot of people say, like, oh, well, you had Von Braun. Well, that he unlocked all the secrets. Eh, not really. No. They actually shelved Von Braun in, like, the late 40s, early 50s. They, they were like, yeah, work on missiles and... or whatever. He really didn't start coming back into his own when they moved him from the Army Ballistic Missile Agency to NASA in 19... what was it, 1961? Or maybe it was 58. I forget. Like, right when NASA started, they moved... Or, no, yeah, it was 61. They moved him... 
over from the army to to NASA, and he was one of the chief designers on the Saturn rockets. But in terms of missiles, there's the aggregate four. There's Bumper, Redstone, Jupiter, and Juno. But that's not all the missiles that we were making. There's Atlas, which he had nothing to do with, which was part of the integrated ballistic missile program. So that was Air Force. There was Atlas, Titan, Vanguard, Delta. Those are all designs he had nothing to do with. Crazy, right? He did design the V2, though, which there must have been blueprints of something. I mean, these a lot of these were clean sheet designs. They may, <laughs> if anything, the the V2 design helped helped like figure out what they need to do but all these are clean sheet designs they share nothing in common with von braun's designs which is pretty crazy when you think about it wasn't the redstone just an american v2 uh it was an extended v2 yeah so the aggregate four the v2 had that nose cone on it the redstone rocket doesn't have a nose cone on it it goes it just keeps going up it's an elongated version but it's the same rocket for the most part That was your point, thanks. Yeah, maybe it influenced it in some way, but yeah, no, like everybody thinks that every missile that was made by the, made by us in the States over here was derived from him. You know, I mean, I just never, f it's like the entirety of the, you know, our entire spaceflight infrastructure is like contingent on that one moment, right, of getting Von Braun. That's not really the case, dude. Uh, you know, and I, I honestly think so. There, people use that just as a way to kind of badmouth the United States, and that's really annoying. I'll be honest with you. It's like, oh well, the U.S. did you didn't do anything. You just copied von Braun's work. Yeah, well, von Braun copied Robert, Robert Goddard's work, who was an American that invented the first liquid fuel rocket. And Robert's Go Robert Goddard's work is based off of Konstantin Tsiolkovsky's math equations, a Russian scientist. So, how far does this go back? You know. Like, I don't know, man. Like, 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 I don't like playing these games. Like, it, it, it's kind of, like, counterintuitive in my mind. I'd say be inspired by the data in advance. There you go. Yeah. No, we're on the same page there. I'm after the tech, dude. I don't really care about the guy's politics, to be honest with you. I don't think anybody did, for that matter. <laughs> Catch my drip. What I meant was that all the ideas didn't come out of the blue. That's all. Yeah. Yep, yep. Everything is based off of something. And there is convergent design. You know? But, yeah. It is pretty cool. Anyway. Let's jump into space news. So. This morning, uh, Blue Origin launched the NS-21 mission. And I would have some video for you. But uh, Blue Origin literally got copy struck on YouTube. And the video got taken down. <laughs> But I did get some pictures. Uh, I did get some pictures here um, from one of the videos. They had a promo video that they showed. Uh, Discovery, go at throttle up. And actually, Chris G has uh, a video of it here. He has the video. So check this out, guys. Hey, Tron, 66 month resub. All of them use calcul calculus invented by an Englishman. That's right. Yep, yep, yep. All right, here, check this video out, fellas. Enough, enough of who made what. Here, look at this. My dream is to go into space. And so from that childhood moment of looking up into the stars to where I am today, it has always been inspired by the ability to somehow one day make it into space. So I work on the second stage of New Glenn. It's the biggest project I've ever seen. The sheer size of the amount of stuff that it can carry is very, very impressive. New Glenn is the baseline, really, for the road to space. It will be the thing that takes us up to orbit and beyond. I'm the senior configurator, so if the teams are having a challenge on integration, I'm the one that facilitates all of those technical... Oh, I'm jelly, I want that job. That job is sick. Very exciting team to work with. Very, very smart people. I mean, oh my god. I stay inspired by keeping the dream in front of me. Landing legs! And I Landing legs! Within my lifetime, I will be able to travel to space. And I want to go to Four. the moon, Mars, 
the auto solo systems, the Kuiper belt, you name it. Sooner the better. You see that guy? I like that guy. Yeah, see? See? That guy gets it. That, yeah, sooner the better. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Integration Engineer. You are a gentleman and a scholar. Good for you. Hell yeah. But dude, look, we got some really, really cool stuff. Check this out. Uh, as far as I know, I've we've never seen a new Glenn second stage. But also, but it's very possible that that is just part of New Glenn's first stage. That could be just the locks of the LNG tank. Whatever this piece of hardware is, I've never seen it before. Look at that. Friction stir welded aluminum bulkheads here. So, yeah. And it looks like it has some kind of milling going on there on the bulkheads. But look look at that. That's high fidelity test hardware right there. Either that jammer, it could be, it could be flight hardware. You could be right. I'm going to go ahead and guess from these holes right here that it, it might, that, hang on, how many, how many, how many holes do we see here? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then there's one in the center. There's a cap in the center. This, this could be the first stage, uh, just because you don't put, you don't put these types of holes in here, uh, unless they were plumbing, they're getting plumbed to somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and guess that there's a hole right here for the center engine New Glenn has six BE4 or seven BE4. So there's one in the center and there's six around the edge. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then there's a cap here. And then there's a cap right there. Locks feed line, LNG feed line. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to go ahead and guess that that's probably the first stage. That's first stage flight hardware right there. You see how there's a weird cap on that one? But yeah, I think that's what's going on here. It looks like we got some spots for uh, umbilicals right there, or landing legs. I don't hate what I'm seeing here. What is this? What what is What the hell am I looking at here? Where'd you find this, Panta? This, this has got to be fan-made. What the frick? It's on Reddit? Oh. <sighs> Whatever this is over here, I want it. Fan made and no, I don't hate it. That would be something, man. That would be something. So yeah, we got, uh, I got some screen caps from it, but here, check it out. There's a, uh, I didn't, I didn't catch that gentleman's name, but that's a, that's a landing leg. That's a new Glenn landing leg right there. So the blue part right here is what would be attached to the body of the rocket. So that piece right there. And then that's the actual leg. And then they have it, they have an extension strut right here. And then a pneumatic, a pneumatic gas strut. Similar, not similar to Falcon 9. This, this mechanism is a little bit different. It's a little more compact, but it does pretty much the same thing. There's also a crush core down there. See that, see that black part right there? Crush core. I'm pretty dang sure. You can see it much better in this picture. Yep. Honeycomb crush core right there with the pneumatic gas strut. Yeah, it's going to have six of them, Hellfish. Yeah, this is beast mode, dude. Just freaking beast mode. No, I don't know what's going on with New Armstrong, but I don't really care. There's New Glenn parts right here. That is that is a very high fidelity flight hardware leg. That's what they'll look like. That's And that's pretty damn impressive right there. That really makes me happy. It's pretty cool. And then the final one is of the stage that we saw. Check that out. This is an inspection bay right here. Holy massive Heim joint. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's quite. Yeah. No. The scale here is a little. A little crazy, huh? Yeah. See? Slow but steady. That's the company's, company's motto. Slow and steady. 
I, it is looking more and more increasingly likely like we will see one of these very, very soon. Sooner rather than later, at least for testing. It seems like they changed the landing leg design quite a lot from the first render. So if we go and look, they did update the render a long time ago. Um... I'm trying to find the video here. Let me see. Yeah, here, take a look. This is from Blue them, themselves. See, that's... That's much more... That looks like what the guy was working on right there. Crazy. This is this is the rocket that they're making. If if people are wondering here, I don't mean to pause it again. Seven meters wide. So that's about twenty two, twenty three feet wide. That's that's pretty big. The flames, the flames will be blue, David. Yeah, uh, um, oxygen-rich methane. Yeah, it'll be blue. Yeah, they'll look like that. Wait a minute. One, two, three, four. There's four attachment points. Yo, that's a second stage. That's a second stage. Those are mount points. Oh. Look, look at the renders. Look at how the engines are attached. One, two, three, and four. It's got it's got a four strut attachment point that matches though it matches those points exactly. That's a second stage, dude. Whoa. That's crazy big. Oh, so I work on the second stage for New Glenn. Okay, missed that part. <laughs> Thanks, Twitching. <laughs> or I could have just read it. God damn it. <laughs> nice. I could have just, you know, dude, I can't be bothered with something like reading. Dude. I swear, streaming streaming stuff makes you dumber. I don't know what it is. It's just something it's something that I don't pay too much mind to, but streaming makes you dumber. I don't know what that's about. Like sometimes, sometimes I'll be like, I'll try to do math on stream and it kind of I'll just do it and we'll be like, okay, this 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 is good. Other times I'm sitting here looking at like basic addition and going, ah. "What?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, McNubby, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. But yeah, the mount points almost match exactly, which is interesting. But is there is there mounts for the plumbing for these engines? That's what I'm that's what I'm looking for. So if So where is the plumbing coming from? There should be pipes and holes for two engines here. Unless those are them right there, who knows? Yeah, Hellfish, yep. Yeah. yeah, I know. It, dude, I'm telling you, it makes you dumber. It's really hard to explain. Sometimes I just have trouble doing basic math on stream, or I miss something stupid. It's like right in front of me. And it really sucks when you're playing a game and you don't know how to play the game, and everyone's like, it's right there! And you're like, where? I don't see it! What are you talking about? You know? That absolutely does happen, man. Love Eagle, what's up? I just finished my first year at university studying aerospace engineering. I may have said it before, but you're part of the reason why I chose that degree, and I'm very grateful to have found your channel. Nice, Lava. All right, you finished your first year. What? What's your GPA? Nine 
My question is, if he's working on the second stage, why is he looking at landing legs? He's an integration engineer. So they would work on second stage and first stage. That guy's job rev is literally like, oh, you know what? You know, you you already know. I don't need to tell you. Uh, I'll tell for everybody else though. I'm like, rev, oh, like, wait a minute, rev. Okay, yeah, no, you don't. You know that. Um, so for everybody else, that guy's job is literally figuring out how everything goes together, which is, oh man, I want that job so bad. Oh, I'd be really good at that, you know. <laughs> you do it intentional to engage the viewers. Yeah, I, w I wit. Yeah, making myself look like an idiot. I'm sorry. That. I don't, I'm, I'm not that shameless, man. <laughs> Just a, not that shameless, but. <laughs> it's a righteous stash. Boom. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about it. I like it, man. I, I like it. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm sorry. My brain is not that three dimensional, dude. I don't have that many wrinkles. You know what I'm saying? I got you. Missed the integration part. Only heard second stage. Yeah, that's why I got confused because I was thinking like, oh, this guy's an integration engineer. It's got to be the first stage. But yeah. Praise hell, praise the hell. <laughs> I, I could get away with it during the pandemic, Panta. I'm not sure if I'm smart enough to be able to try it again, but we'll see. <laughs> I am moving out in the sticks, man. So, and that actually, that's looking ever increasingly likely as the day goes by. Anyway. So. Elon actually tweeted this a little bit. Let's let's flip the page flip the page a second. Elon tweeted this uh, today. Here, check that out. Four Falcon Heavy flights this year by an incredible team at SpaceX. SpaceX has four more flights on the manifest, starting with the Psyche mission. Psyche mission is the Falcon Heavy mission that's going to move a NASA payload called Psyche to the asteroid called Psyche. It's, uh... So, actually, th that mission's scheduled to go in September, but Psyche is... That, that mission's really cool. That's like a flagship NASA mission. And not many people are not many people are talking about it, but it, it kind of goes along with the Lucy mission that was launched on ULA's rocket. Lucy was going to visit a bunch of different asteroids, right? Psyche is going to one asteroid. And the asteroid that it's going to go to is an asteroid that NASA thinks has a bunch of rare earth metals on. Psyche is it's it's not technically supposed to be this, but it's pro it's a prospecting satellite. Yeah. Prospecting. It's going to go figure out what Psyche is made out of. Because they think, NASA thinks that it's made out of like titanium, platinum, like a bunch of rare earth metals. And if it is, then who? Who? Did anything interesting happen with DART? It's coasting out there right now, KSP, yeah. Why don't rockets need small winglets? The Saturn V did not have wings. Why does Blue Origins have wings? Those, those, the winglets are for flying back, Violent. That's for boost back and fly, fly back. The Saturn V doesn't have those because Saturn V is hit the go button and then get rid of it. Did you get the house? Karma's, um, I guess now's a good time and ever to talk about it. Uh, the bank appraisal came back and it came back 10K over what we paid. Not a bad problem to have. Yeah, so that's that's not a bad problem to have. Um, that's really, really good news. So that was like the final... Uh, what I've been telling people, Karma, is, is in this whole real estate process, that's the final hurdle. But we still have to finish the race. Uh, closing should be at the end of the month. But we're in conditional approval by all parties. We just got to finish the paperwork and stuff. Yeah, we got ten. We, yeah, the house has generated 10k in equity before we've even moved into it, which is just absolutely. That's that's not. My realtor was telling me that that doesn't happen very often. It's just the way the market is right now, and he he's like, I don't think I think it's gonna happen again. I think if you get the house appraised again, like next year, it'll go up even more, and you don't even have to do anything. 
Definitely, most houses around here, the appraisals have been going far under what people are offering. Yeah, yeah, Rev. I, fortunately, I'm in one part of the country where the demand and the prices are kind of aligned. Yeah, it's not. I was worried it was going to be the opposite of that, dude. I was worried we were going to get screwed on closing costs, and and that was the end of that. But no, it actually, we actually. Uh, I still got chapped lips in the middle of freaking spring, man. I can't believe this. No, that's that's very good news. That means our closing costs will be low. Well, that actually means that we've paid for all of our closing costs already. So there's not there shouldn't be any monetary surprises from here. It's just literally getting the paperwork done. Don't do that, then the property taxes will go up. Yeah, I lost my home appraisal in an unfortunate boating accident. Accident. So for heavy, so for Falcon Heavy. <laughs> I'm sorry, I lost it in a boating accident, dude. I don't know what you're talking about. Hunster, for, for Falcon Heavy, we have Visat 3, Psyche, USS F-52, USS F-44 in December. That's awesome. So I think most of those are expendable, right? Hell yeah, good news. Hope you get it. Yeah, me too, man. Me too. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying not to get excited. Oh, that's terrible. That's terrible, Lundfraud. Jesus. I'm trying not to get excited until, excited until I get a key in my hand. But, uh, yeah. I think it's safe to start packing stuff up around here. Yeah, I think, I, think we're safe, I think we are safe to do that. Psyche will be first. All centers will be expended. Oof. All of them have the center course expended. <laughs> oh, well. So wait, Phil, are we going to see, so does, does that mean we're going to see a Falcon Heavy with landing legs on the side boosters, but no landing legs on the center core? Didn't we do that in KSP in like 2017 or something? Because I didn't, I, I could, I kind of figured out that... The center core trying to land on a drone ship was way too complicated to, to try and dial in with double booster landings. <laughs> yeah, Karmas, I think I think we should start packing. Brimo started packing up the apartment. It's weird, man. I really, really wish we had that VOD saved. Yep, yep, yep. Elon's just slow compared to you. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> he really likes crap posting on chat uh, in in Twitter, doesn't he? On fraud, yeah. Anyway, and I think Vice Hat Three will have one side booster that has flown five times, a new center core with no fins and legs, and a side booster that's only flown two times. That's really that's really strange, dude. You said something about electric wires. Do they need to be replaced before moving in? That was under conditional approval, Ciantic. Uh There was some weird stuff with how the electrical box was placed. Uh, but yeah, all that stuff sorted, man. That's all sorted out. Uh, yeah, I uh, had to get into... We had to do some negotiations here and there after the building inspection because there was some stuff that wasn't up to code. But they agreed to fix all of it, so... Okay. How fast can I pack up the control room? Eh, this is all modular. We just duct tape, saran wrap and duct tape all these consoles and we should be good. Visat will apparently have a dot nine booster as one of the sides. <whistles> yeah, see, Antic, so we're, we're good, man. Got the poison ivy sorted? Yeah, that's all, that's all figured out. That's all figured out. Yeah, drummer. It's going to be pretty sweet. We've been, I've been talking with the sellers back and we've been, Brimo and I have been talking with the sellers back and forth about like what furniture, like they're like, do you want furniture? Like they said, like, if you want, if you want all the furniture in the house, it's this amount. And we're like, yeah, we can't really afford that. So, uh, how about like, we want this, 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 and this, like for instance, they have a ride on mower, a ride on mower that they're, they'd be willing to sell for like nothing because they can't take it with them. Uh, once again, the, the people that, the people that live in this house are moving like to California or something. They don't want to take anything. Like, screw that. Why would you take like, 
That's such a pain in the butt to move across the across the country like that. I, I don't know where they're moving, to be fair. They said it was far away. So... Do they have a snowplow? They have a snowblower, but I have a snowblower too. I already have one lined up. I've been talking around people to people and stuff like that. Uh, and like, there may or may not have been a reason why I just messed around on Gov Planet yesterday, but like looking for equipment because I knew you could get good equipment there. I'm looking for lifts and stuff. But listen to this, fellas. After I was on GSA auctions last night, and yes, this is space news. No, I'm just not. I'm not just looking at trucks. Check this out. A viewer found this. Uh, Cyborg in chat found this. Look, look what's up for auction right now. A node static test article. It is a. It is an STA for an ISS module. A real that that's Node Two's static test article. Look, straight up, straight up Node Two static test article was found uh, found on GSA auctions. Look at the price. The reserve hasn't been met yet, though. But also. That's a space station module that's for sale right there, by the way. I am seriously considering bidding on this thing. No, I'm not taking it home with me. I have no place for this. I'm seriously considering bidding on it and set like donating it to a museum. So why isn't it being made operational and sent up? It's almost like the vehicle that was designed to do that doesn't exist anymore, Hellfish. New streaming room? Wouldn't that be something? That is straight up a static test article. Straight up. A straight up space station module. And it even has the trailer that's designed for the shuttle payload bay integration. Buy it now? It's on bid and the reserve hasn't been met. God knows what the reserve is. Do we know? And like, look, this is legit. I'm, I, we gotta, we gotta, I'm gonna send that dude an email. And... We gotta see, like, dude, I'll... We should, like, get a GoFundMe and get that to go to a... I don't even know. Like, where would... The Smithsonian, maybe? What's cooking, peoples? Soon T, we've been going on government auctions lately. Check this out. Look what we found. A viewer found this. I didn't find this. But look at look at that. That's a, a Node... That's a Node 2 s static test article, man. That's a real space station module that NASA used for testing. There it is inside of ONC right there. Is it aluminum? Yep. Most likely 7000 series aluminum. But look, it's got the racks inside, man. Oh, that's so cool. I doubt a big museum would want it. Well, O4, yeah, I mean, OX, dude... I'm like, seriously, I wonder, I, I should call and ask what the reserve is and we should don't, we should, we should buy it and donate it. Evergreen? Ugh, that's a long way away, dude. Is it just normal to put these up for auction? You'd be insanely surprised what you can find. Get in it and play tin can in it. I, I want, I want it, but I don't know what, to, like, I don't know what to do with it. I can't put that anywhere. What's a reserve? So anytime there's an auction, crazy, there's a minimal price. So say I want to take my truck, right? And I want to auction off my truck. I'll have a reserve. Say I put $10,000 worth of work into my truck and then I want to sell it. I'll set my reserve at for 10K, right? And then if the auction bids above 10K, I'll know at the very least I'll get my money back, right? And then from there, it's just all profit. That's what a reserve is with it with an article like that. Um, why are these things not being recycled? I don't know. I don't know why that's on Gov Auction. It shouldn't be on Gov Auction. They should NASA should donate that to a museum. But also, whatever. What's good for the goose is good for the gander, man. 
That's Node 2 SN1, which is unbelievable. That's the first space station module for, that's the first Node 2 model that they made. Converted to an Airstream? No. No. Hey boss, what's going on? Look at that. Oh man, that's so cool. Also, that jet engine that's sitting next to it would be pretty cool. Probably too heavy to mount on a pickup. The pickup truck could fit inside of this, drummer. Tough enough, if we could take off one of the end bulkheads, we could put the truck inside of it. Yeah. The reason why probably nobody's bid on this thing is because it's too big. It's an oversized load. It's probably too big and too heavy. Yeah, Sarah, I know. That's the that's the crappy part. That's probably why no one's no one wants it because it's it's too big. It's way too big. Like you that thing would be very expensive to move around. So the bid might be 325, but also there's a reserve on it, you know. Does it say what the reserve is? No. Ask Heavy D to move it around. Yeah, right. How heavy would it likely be? I mean, that module doesn't have nothing in it. It's probably a couple tons. But it's big. It is physically a big piece of equipment, guys. The scale is really hard to understand here. Look look, look at the trailer. That's a regular low boy trailer right there. So that's a flatbed semi. That module is gigantic. Now I want to do some looking around. It's in a covered building with the outsides open like that. I wonder where that I wonder where that is. It's it says Kennedy Space Center. Let's go peeping. Circular, just roll it. Yeah, that external tank. I don't know who owns that damn external tank. Well, we kind of do. And I never followed up on that. We should probably do that. So I'm going to go ahead and guess, <clears throat> because there were pictures of it inside operations and checkout right here. That's that building right there. And then where the astronauts come out is over here. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's over here. In, in there... Yeah, it's in this building right here. Uh, this is where all the Apollo capsules were made and engineered and put together. And there's a picture of that module in there. So we need to look for an open-air warehouse that's near, near this. Let's see what we can see. These pictures are old enough that the building's probably there. Oh, look. Prototype service gantry for SLS. Nice. They also test all the umbilicals for SLS right here. See, see the... All the umbilical attachment points. Just on a side note, if you want to go look for some cool stuff. I just saw an open shed that could fit in the description. Hit me. I found a contact for an old military museum near nearby back when we were looking into it to see if they made anything. Did you did you follow up on it, Moto? I forgot, dude. I forgot. I forgot to do it. Maybe. Let's go take a look. Nah, I don't think that building is big enough, dude. No, they usually store stuff down here, down here a little ways. Yeah, there's all kinds of cool test stand stuff out here if you really know what to look for. Uh, see, these are all the different facilities for all the different parts that became redundant after the Apollo program. Some of them, they still use some of them, but not all of them. Yeah, there's a lot of history. I mean, there's still they still do stuff. Look. 
Some of these facilities still get used. There's a bunch of Orion testing articles right there. Tracking station, maybe up here. No, that just goes back to the causeway. Let's check over here. That is the launch escape system uh, area where they build the LES for Orion, I think. I think that's what that is. It just says Kennedy Space Center, dude. Oh, M6 Building 1671. I don't know what what that is. I don't know the building numbers. Oh, there's a building that matches it right there. But that one... <clears throat> the building from the pictures has sides on it. Yeah, I know, Karma. He is. Rev, you think you might know? The launch aborts. Yeah, the launch abort facility, Rev. Cool, cool, cool. I think I... Yeah. All right. I'm going to look around. Whoa. Hey! Dude! No way! I've never found that thing on Google Earth before. Look! Who knows what that is? Oh, that's sick. <clears throat> that's cool. That's the Falcon 9 former shuttle transporter. SpaceX bought that in a government auction for 37 grand. Yeah, seriously. They they bought it from NASA from an auction. Here, check this out. That thing. That's that thing. The Cometo. Let's back it up a little bit. See? And then they use it to move Falcon 9s around. Yeah, Hunster, exactly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's cool. I've never found it on Google Earth, but there it is. That's really neat. I wonder what that building... Oh, no, that's daycare. It's got a playground. They still use it. You're damn right they do. Is there a building down here, Rev? I hate this area with a passion because anybody that works at KSC knows about this, this place. This place sucks. Sucks. A daycare for astronauts. <laughs> What happens there? Scrapyard. Scrapyard, dude. Have you ever seen this place I was looking for randomly on Google Maps? No, I like the building, though. State Railway Academy. Cool. Yeah, it's a nice looking building. That's neoclassical, man. Uh, that's my favorite. Uh, where else could that module be? Rev, my only other guess is that it made its way over here. This is the Cape Canaveral. Space Force Station side of things. If you go looking around on Google Earth, you'll find a bunch of cool stuff over here. Hang on. Realtor. I don't see scrap. I see potential for future projects. Me too.
Let's look around. You see anything? You see anything? It might be Cape Side or it might be in the industrial area south of, south of the VAB. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's I I'm gonna go ahead and guess that it probably stayed Cape Side. Yeah, let's go look at the industrial area. 1671, dude. M6 1671. Let's go look. We're just looking for an open air an open air building, a building with no front and back but with walls and a roof. Like walls on the left side, left side and right side. This is the KSC industrial area right here. They used it for solid rocket motor processing during the shuttle program. Oh, you might be right. Nope, that building has three walls. Nope, never mind. Unless it's over here. Nope. What are we looking for? Goalie, you, uh, you seen this thing around anywhere? In a building like that? Is the RRMF. What's the RRMF? There's Teslas next to it. There's a bunch of Teslas. Hmm. Reutilization, recycling, and market facility. Okay, where's that at? Sorry for caps, copy and paste. Eh, no problem. Put it into Google Maps. RRMF. Nope. That didn't work at all. It's at the reclamation yard? Oh no. I think this might be where the guy works. I don't think this is the building because none of these buildings match the pictures. This is all leftover shuttle integration stuff, guys. That's what this scrapyard is. That's why I don't like this place. Can we see the pictures again? So there's Teslas there. So this was a recent picture. There's a jet engine sitting next to it. And this is just a big open air building. It's open on both sides. There it is. That was it in no one's see right there. There's a fence near it. I'm trying to figure out where the heck this module is. This came up on Gov Auctions, guys, for the people that haven't looked. This is a, a, a static test article, which is basically a, it's basically a module that they just never launch into space. They use it for testing. It's on Gava, it's on GSA auctions for 300 bucks. Now, it, there is a reserve, so I don't know I don't know how far we're going to get. New tiny home? Really? Wonder who would buy that? I, I Actually, boss, I was thinking about I was thinking about it, and actually, that looks like the building right there, but the roof doesn't match, and it has three walls, so. What I was thinking about is, you know, if we'll watch that auction over the next couple of days, I would be interested to know what the reserve is. If the reserve is like 500 bucks, dude, we'll crowdfund that and then just donate it to a freaking museum. I know people in the moving industry. We could, we could find ways to move it. Looks tricky to transport. 
I agree. Kind of small building, just one column of beams in the middle. Yep. It could make a sweet sauna. Ugh. Can you message the seller about that reserve? I might do that. I saw a potential match of just west of the first place that you looked. Okay, Iger, where am I from here? Look at the compass. Where are we going? We gotta find this sucker, man. It's somewhere in KSC. We just gotta find the building. Looks like a plane hangar at the landing strip. There's a potential building here. Alright, Jen, let me see. Yeah, okay. You know what? I'm going to put this on the most recent. See if there's any buildings that have been made since. Nope. I mean, that one might be it. But that one, that building, I think, in the pictures had... It has... I don't know. No, it doesn't. That might be it, dude. Yeah, that one might be it, dude. West. West of this, Iger? There's nothing west of that. Um, this is Blue Origins facilities over here. I'm going to go ahead and guess that that's probably it. This one right here. But that would mean there's a building behind it. I didn't see anything like that, so it could be somewhere else. Either way, it's pretty awesome and I kind of want it. It wouldn't be over here. But yeah, Ivan, I got you. The picture with the Teslas, you could see another building outside. page I linked has it here. All right, Sarah, let me see. Boop. Unless they built a new building here very recently, I highly doubt it. Could be that one. Uh, all those shuttle parts. That's all scrap from all the equipment for the shuttle program. No joke. Hurts to see it. Yeah, it's gotta be here. I mean, I don't know for sure. Uh, the photogrammetry doesn't really match up. None of these buildings match the description of what we're looking at. Unless they knocked out a wall on one of these things. Not the node module, but what is this thing? Okay, hold on. That building sort of reminds me of one out at Patrick. Okay. That's a shuttle test article. Yeah, it's a shuttle testing article, and then there's a test for a crew access arm right there. I don't know what this facility was used for. I forget. We looked it up once. I totally forget what it was, but yeah. You'll see all kinds of stuff like this just chilling. Old rocket fuel tanks. Uh, old tracking stations. There's all kinds of stuff. I mean, the other, there is one other place that maybe we could look at. Maybe the, the skid strip. 
skid strip has a single F15 on it in that picture, so I highly doubt that. Nope. If you're if you're gonna ask me what all these buildings do, I have no freaking clue. I don't know. There's a track out there. That's cool. Cool. Some basketball courts. Some tennis courts. There's Hangar M. That's where SpaceX was working on Falcon 9s for the longest time. Uh, yeah, they were using Hangar M. Well then, I know what that is. We didn't find the test article, but uh, I may have found something else. RMF besides sewage and GFE storage. Thomas, do you see what I'm seeing right there? When were these pictures taken? Those are starship launch. Those are starship mount parts. That's a starship. That's a starship launch pad. What else are they storing out here? That's parts of the launch table. I, I hundred percent undeniable. What else? Now I want to. Now I'm peeping. Oh, wind turbine cherry pickers. Gee, I wonder what those are used for. Hmm. Makes you think what's in there. Gee, goalie. Yeah, I wonder what SpaceX is making inside of Hangar M. Gosh, geez, that I couldn't I couldn't tell you what. Interesting. Guessing these are the items that they're storing behind next to the uh, next to the thing. Oh, let me see. Well, that's a bit of new information. Can you see the module in this picture? It's really hard to tell. It looks like the RRMF, I mean. But also, there's a jet engine sitting over there. And some Teslas. Yeah, and that Ford, that Ford. But yeah, Thomas, you see that? Those are launch mount parts, dude. Yeah. They were there as early as January. That's crazy. That's going to roll. Dude, that, that should be rolling out soon. Yeah, SpaceX has used this in the past for stuff. For storage and stuff. Like those things. I'm so surprised it took you this long. It was there a few months ago. Yeah. Interesting. How far away is that building? Hangar M? Uh, M is at CCFS, so they're making them there for something up there. Goalie as to where it's going, I would guess it's just going to go up here. That's the quickest way, but I'm not sure if that road is heavy enough. If it's not, you're going to have to take the crawler way. But I don't think the causeway is heavy enough either. There's definitely a weight restriction on a bridge like that. Try and map it out. You want me to map how they're going to move the launch mount to 39A? Uh, okay. 
Well, I don't know anything about heavy lifting, but this is what I would do. You need roads with wide radiuses. Or wide radii. I wouldn't go on the causeways, because they're not heavy enough. The, the, the launch mount's going to be way too heavy. They're not, uh, they're not a good enough road. I know that this road is. I've driven on this road. Water route? Nah. I know this road is heavy enough because they moved Delta 4 boosters to the Delta Operations Center, or the Delta Integration Building right there because Slick 37 is a Delta pad. So I know that that road's built heavy. And I've driven down it. And this road has a wide enough berth. There's not stuff in the, in the way. Uh, past that nice parking lot. There's a gate right there. That could be a way to do it. It's possible. That's a possible way to do it. Or... I wouldn't take it across the causeways. You guys said the only other way. That part next to the pad is not heavy enough. Well, if you can't go that way and you can't go on this road because it'll sink. Uh, where is it? Yeah, if you can't use that stretch of road because that bridge right there. The only, the only other way is the turning basin. So I would offload put it on a barge here at Hangar AF, right? Which was the old, that's an SRB processing, or was an SRB processing area. Was. I'd go here, drop it on there, and then I'd take it to the turning basin. I'd take it on a barge up the Banana River to the turning basin right here and use, use that, because I know that road's heavy enough. That was the other way, because you ain't taking it across the causeway. That'll collapse the bridge. The, the orbital launch mount is much too heavy. It's designed to hold up a rocket called Super Heavy. It's, it's too big. So, barge is my final answer, man. But yeah, that's really cool. So, guys, we, I, we found something. We found something very interesting. We know that Hangar M is, belongs to SpaceX, because, like, if you go here, like right here... Uh, no, right here. There's Falcon 9s. That one's the one that's in Gateway. That one's in a museum. I'm not sure what that one is. They Maybe maybe they scrapped it. But you know there's SpaceX because of all the stuff. And it actually looks like it's being used. But that's another story. <clears throat> so, if we go to the most recent picture, there's definitely Starship pad parts right there. Yeah, that's definitely Starship o orbital launch mount parts. The Falcon 9 there with the interstage is at Slick 40. It's at 40? What the hell is it doing at 40? And where is it at 40? They moved it to the parking lot north of pad 40. I don't see it. Interesting. Where are the tower segments? The tower segments are at Roberts Road. This picture is still a little bit on the older side, but you could see the mounts for them right there. And then that's the... This is what replaced Hangar M. It's visible in a ULA pick, please hold. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's the uh, new KSC facility. They demolished the old one. Shame. I've been in that building.
Would Google Earth let you overlay 3D stuff on top of it that you made in Mayan Blender? I think you can, yeah. There's Blue Origins factories. With the blue tarp. Good eye. I do you find something? Oh, I clicked out of Google Earth. Give me one second. Is that open? No, it's not open on either side, dude. No, it's not the right building. This, once again, the module has a building that only has two walls. It has two walls and a roof. Could be that. That looks like a gas station, though. You think you found it, Lenprod? Let me see. That's the RRMF. Okay. I didn't have 3D. Oh, no problem, dude. Thank you for looking. You think this one, Lenprod? If it ain't that one, I'm probably going to guess that it's this one because the can the photogrammetry do us any favors no nah, not really yeah i'm gonna i think you guys are right i think it's this one or one of these buildings this is where they recycle this stuff so dude you give me if you had if i had like a day in here it would, it would be insane. Uh, there's so much cool stuff. Trucks, cars, integration vehicles, even porta potties. Like that's where NASA, from outgoing programs, they recycle it and they repurpose it here. At one point, fellas, there was all kinds of shuttle stuff sitting in here. Um, I'll give you. I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you see. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what gave away the shuttle stuff, but I'll let you guys be the judge. Unfortunately, there's no photogrammetry, but I think this one looks pretty similar. Let me see. I'll key that in there. Yeah. SRB jigs right there. Oh, man. There's so much stuff. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to look at, man. I don't I really don't like it. Really don't like it. Anyway, let's let's check this. Let me see. At least that's where they took the pictures. I think you might be right. That building looks correct. Is that the same tank? Which one? Yeah, I think that might be it, dude. The concrete and the age of the building does match, and there is a fence back there, and you can definitely see a wired fence in the background there. There are, other, there are other aircraft there that they're selling that are, look like they're in the same building. Single post. 
That's it. It has to be that. Yeah, that's the building. I'm convinced. The only thing that doesn't make sense is that there's no building in the background. Because you, in one of those pictures, you could definitely see a building in the background. It's, uh, this one. Something is over there, and I don't know what it is. Hang on. Yeah, single post. There it is. I, I think that's it, Rev. I think you might be right. What is it? A fake node static test article? No, it's a real space station module. It just never launched into space uh, because they used it for testing. It's for sale for 320 bucks. Now, granted, it does have a reserve, but the reserve hasn't been met. There are a fleet of Teslas that sit at the SLF, just don't remember where. How will you get it? I know people that can move stuff around. I understand you're a man that knows how to get things. I've been known to locate certain things from time to time. Alright, anyway, speaking of... Uh, it's a very Italian answer. Actually, Irish. If you really want to know. Why they call you red? Maybe it's because I'm Irish. So saying you operate in logistics. Sure. Here, let's see what's going on with Starship. footage is uh, NSF footage, as you know. Sorry, I zoned for a second because I was looking at the damn tank jig. Make sure you go over there and give NASA Spaceflight a subscription. It's uh, on YouTube. This uh, footage was shot by Mary and Nick and the NSF robots. Ground level picture of that building. Yeah, it's definitely that building. Good find, Thomas. And Rev, thank you very much, too. JCB junk. Glad my wandering has paid off. Hell yeah. Rev, we're good to roll in two days or what? And for after this video. No! I don't like that at all. If the weather is fine, we probably could have rolled it sooner. Yeah, yeah. I don't like anything about this at all.
Sounds good, bud. Huh. Looks like a little mini high bay is being built there. Wide berth garage door. Wonder what they're going to put in there. EJ's future garage? I like that answer the best. Ship 24 has since moved from there. Look at that thing. Frickin' spaceship. starting to get to the point where it looks like a spacecraft, huh? I'm not yawning. I was just making faces at you, chat. Sent that email to that museum next to the shuttle tank. We shall soon see if they know anything about it. Cool, cool, Moto. Thank you. Would you point out the door? I can't see it. Sure. Um, see that? That's the entrance right there. Notice how these these small beams right there are going down the sides, right? And then they they're they're not the same length. They stop right here, and then there's two supports right there. That means the door is going to be that big. That's a big freaking door. No, the starship door. I thought it was a weird question, Cooking. I'm like, what are you talking about, man? See that little dispenser right there? That little slot? Like a mailbox slot? That's the dispenser. So from what I can tell, Starlink satellites are stacked inside a starship. Like this dispenser opens... They put it in and it goes up and they put another in and it goes up and it's like a Pez dispenser. So the Starlink satellites will be stacked in here and then just this thing opens and it spits it out like making it rain. Like That's most likely a very, very big prototype. Uh, I really highly doubt it'll end up looking like that in the long run, but it might. It depends, I guess, if it works. Spiral staircase. transportation stand. Booter! Remedios! Yeah, 
that. They almost got all the paneling up on there. I still can't figure out what they're doing with the roof of that thing. Like I said, there's easily two stories of, uh, two floors of extra roof on there. I don't, I mean, that's not the right way to say that. But mega disco, of course. Viewing area? I don't know. My guess would be mission control. Uh, or like a launch control center. I think they might put it on top, but I, I don't know. Foz, I can't figure it out, and I haven't heard anything about it. If you have any information, please contact the nearest Twitch streamer that streams Kerbal. Booter. Rotate the booter. Booter was rotated. Do they do any more final redesigning lately before the orbital flight test? If they were planning on flying soon, Sile, I wouldn't be changing anything with the design. I would be building what you have and then sending it and then learn from, learn from the flight test. So we most likely won't see many revisions to Starship or Super Heavy, like big changes. Uh, probably for a little bit. What is that thing? What is that thing? What was, what was that? It's a jet ski quad? Well then. Wadsky. Yeah. That's a big building. I brought it up, Cyborg. We even we even found what building it was in. There's glass on the right one. Yeah, there's a bar up there per Elon Musk shot. Space bar or something. Who knows from? What's better than one bar? Two bars? I mean, I prefer 300 bars if you uh, catch my drift. One bar of
I think it's 24 7 concert, yeah. Yeah, Thomas, you see how the stringers go down a little bit further right there? They are slimmer. NASA launch? No, not right now. We're just watching some footage from, to, uh, from yesterday uh, down at SpaceX's uh, Starship production facility. in the video? I'm wondering. <laughs> I'm sorry, that makes me laugh. <laughs> Lift happening today, so it won't be in the video. Got it. That's just weird. <laughs> That's just strange to look at, man. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Bam, 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 bam. All right, let's see. That's coming from Mary. Mary is the woman that uh, that films most of this. And yep, it's on the pad. Pardon me. Excuse me. They should troll everybody and stack Star Hopper on the booster at some point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Star Hopper Heavy. Ready for a cryo load. Under ready for cryo under the load of the hydraulic pistons. This testing is should begin on Monday. Star Heavy Super Hopper. Yep. Okay. All right. I think that's everything. <sighs> I 
I'm just looking around to see if there's much, much of anything else. Elon's tweeting right now, but he's tweeting about Tesla and stuff. There is a lot of uh, there's a lot of crap posting. Yeah, that's a lot of, that's a lot of crap posting. Yeah, ooh. It's Twitter, what do you expect? Yeah, yeah, okay. <sighs> wow. All right. Um. Okay, fellas. Twitter is the internet's toilet. <laughs> I think I like to call it the Internet Zoo, Kev. It's the Internet Zoo. We can go and you can enjoy the exhibits. But don't don't jump into the lion's den. What are you crazy? Don't look at Anatoly Zach's tweet about the Russian telescope. Now I gotta look at it. Roscosmos head orders reactivation of German telescope aboard the rush aboard a Russian spacecraft because those who made a decision to stop its work have have no any ha, have do not have a moral right to stop these studies just because of their. Oh. 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 <laughs> I'm not I'm not finishing that sentence. You guys can look at it. Jesus. Oh. Like I said, the zoo. I'm just I'm just going to be over here doing my doing my thing and just not be there at all. Wow. That's uh Link, don't join the zoo, man. Don't join the zoo. Yeah, yeah, Jock. Man, he, uh. They're, uh, really not, uh. They're really doubling down on that, huh? Okay. Four Falcon Heavy launches, yep. Viasat, Viasat, uh, Psyche, SF 52, and SF 44. Yep, four more. You wanna know what the scary part about that is, Linus? The scary part about it is that. Half of these missions are payload, have payloads hung up. 
The reason why there's four Falcon Heavies is not because they don't have enough Falcon Heavies. SpaceX, is, SpaceX has all the Falcon Heavies made. Actually, most, well, most of them. I know they have three. Three? Three. They have three of them already made. Payloads keep getting delayed. Roscosmos is apparently also going to pull the remaining Soyuz rockets and support hardware from Kourou. Okay. Oh, boo-hoo. You're going to pull all, all the Soyuz stuff from, from Kourou. You're going to pull all of it. So you can bring it back and launch more rockets with... All right. Yeah, you can you can take them back to all your take them back to all your customers back in Russia that want to use those or something. 